Meanwhile, hi, this is Seb. Um, I'm here alone today. Mark is, is away. Uh, I'm going to be doing a very special solo, uh, almost video essay kind of episode today. Now, I'm going to be talking about the season two finale of The Mandalorian. So if you haven't already, please be sure to watch that now. Spoiler alert, all the usual stuff. Um, now, if you've seen the title and you're already putting in the comments how I'm wrong or you're smashing that dislike button, please, I implore you to hear me out. Now, first, I want to get this out of the way. I had a great, great time watching the finale. You can see my reactions on our last video. Link is in the description below. You will see that I lost my mind when Luke came in. It was absolute scenes. I went nuts. And I'm not saying that it was a bad finale. I'm not saying it was a bad episode. I'm not saying it's shitty. I'm not saying that, you know, it was crap. I'm just saying that it could have been better. Now, hear me out. Uh, I personally feel that Favreau and the showrunners played this a little safe. I think they played the finale a little too by the book. Um, but before I go into that, you know, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Again, if you disagree, then fair enough, of course, because you're entitled to your opinion. Um, but all right, let's just go into the brass tacks. Now, I've got a list of strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons of this episode. So I'm going to go, you know, go through them one by one and make sure that you guys know that it's going to be a balanced argument. Like I want to you know, make sure that you guys know that it's not like one-sided. So first up, um, you know, the episode starts off with this chase scene. I really like that it starts off with the action. I think it was great. It was very James Bond-esque. I love that. Uh, but what I also really like is that in this episode, as well as some previous episodes, especially the Bill Burr one, we've been getting a lot more perspective into the Imperial side of the story. Like we've been getting to know the personalities of stormtroopers a little bit more. Uh, with Bill Burr, we got, you know, his view on Operation Cinder. Uh, in this episode, we got the, the pilot who was on the Death Star. And yes, the pilot guy was a bit of a dick, but it's nice, you know, it's nice kind of seeing their side and kind of getting to know a face behind the helmet. And I think they've done that really, really well. Um, and then moving on, I think it was also really cool that later on in the episode, Bo-Katan knew Boba's voice just from hearing the voice, which of course makes sense. Um, you know, she must have heard that voice like a thousand times in the Clone Wars, so it makes sense that she would know that Boba is a clone. So I really like that. I really, really like that. But on the subject of uh, Bo-Katan, I think I really liked how they showed how badass the female characters are in this episode. Uh, Mercedes Bernardo as Cosca Reeves, that's the other Mandalorian. She was cool. She, you know, she had an amazing fight with Boba Fett. It was really equal as well. Uh, that scene when they like both do the flamethrower thing, love that. It's great. Katie Sackhoff as Bo-Katan, of course, always going to be badass. Uh, Ming-Na Wen as Fennec, you know, big up the representation, Asian, love it, uh, Fennec, and of course, Cara Dune, the, the girl gang were sick this episode, I really like that, you know, they, and I, I like that it wasn't, it didn't seem forced as well, it was like developed that these guys are badass characters, so I, I really like that, I think they, you know, handled that very well, and they put them, you know, on the pedestal this episode, when they split up um, during the main, you know, portion of the episode, they split up to take the bridge and they just kick some ass. However, that being said, I'm, it kind of, it's a segue to my next point, And it's a very big point is I never really feel that the characters are in danger, um, especially with the girl gang, because they mainly go up against stormtroopers. And at this point, we all know the stormtroopers are terrible. You know, we all know that there's they always miss. And at one point, the girls they come out of a of a lift when um, Cara Dune's gun is jammed. They come out, and there's about like fifty stormtroopers, and they just mow them all down. And there's at no point are you really thinking like, oh, one of them might get hurt. And I don't know. I just feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity here, where we could have been shown, you know, some danger, some threat. 
um, with the girls. Like, none of them even get a scratch. None of them is even hit once. So I'm kind of feeling, you know, how are we meant to feel or have any level of suspense? But that being said, uh, on the other side, like, um, you know, when they split up, I think you get a lot more danger with Mando, with Din, when, especially when he's fighting the Dark Trooper. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. I think the Dark Trooper looked badass and it actually did some badass things. The way it withstood every attack by Din was amazing. Like, at this point, this was like the only point where I was kind of like, oh my god, yo, this guy's, this guy's sick. And uh, when the Dark Trooper was like bashing um, Din's head, it gave me like Game of Thrones Oberyn flashbacks where it's like, oh my god, whoa, ah, PTSD. Ah. It was sick. I really liked that. I think they handled that really, really well. We actually felt like the Dark Troopers could do stuff. Um, and then, of course, you know, when Din takes out the, man the Beskar spear, love that. I think the choreography was great. He had this one move where he kicks it up and he stabs it. Very Oberyn esque, kind of an Easter egg, I feel. That was sick. I and mean, I thought that fight was really, really well done. And I think that was good. However, I just feel that maybe, I don't know, maybe having one Dark Trooper make it to the girls just so there could be a little bit more tension could have been great. Uh, I feel like the girls would have been able to, you know, um, beat the Dark Trooper. But I think that we just needed a little bit more danger going on. And then, of course, Din faces Moff Gideon. Now, again, the fight scene was very well choreographed, very well shot, very well acted. I think Esposito need to give credit to him. It makes sense why he broke, you know, so many Darksaber props on set. He went for it, and I love it. But that being said, I think there just wasn't enough to suggest that Moff Gideon ever would have won. Because earlier in the episode, Bo-Katan makes a point of saying, oh, the Darksaber can cut through almost anything except pure Beskar. Now, and we all know Mando wears pure Beskar. Now, of course, he's still got like a few, you know, gaps between the armor pieces where he could have gotten stabbed and stuff. But knowing that, knowing that the best, like, you know, the Darksaber couldn't have cut through the Beskar doesn't really, you know, bode too well for Gideon's chances. And again, it kind of lowers the stakes a little bit. Um, and that being said, of course, you know, add the plot shield of him being the titular character on top of that. But I can, I can excuse that. You know, I think that's always going to be there. Being Mando, he's always going to have plot shield. But yeah, I think the Gideon fight was very well shot. But at no point was I really thinking Gideon was going to do too well. And I think at the end when um, Mando beats him, it makes sense. Uh, but I think from there onwards, the stakes started lowering for me. Now, I think you guys are probably saying that, oh, what does that mean? Like, that, like that's when the stakes should be going higher. Yes, that is and should be when, um, you know, the second act is coming to an end and we're getting to the third act. That's when the tension, the suspense should be at its highest. And I would say... I loved the tension building in the lead up to the, you know, them being trapped in the bridge and the Dark Troopers coming in. I thought that was very well done with the music and the sound effects and stuff. But I still think that you as the audience knew that a do ex machina moment was coming. Um, and I personally think that it was quite obvious that someone was going to come and save them. Yes, because it was foreshadowed in the in past episodes where we knew a Jedi was coming, but also because the episode at that point had played it quite safe, I think on a narrative standpoint, it became a little predictable. Now, hear me out. Um, obviously, I've, I know that this is, you know, quite, this is coming from my perspective and you guys may disagree, which is fine, but I do feel that the Mandalorian so far every episode have has been quite formulaic at no point have there been major twists and turns which is fine you know i think it's okay i can allow it but i still think that they played this show very very safe and because of that i wasn't expecting there to be a major twist 
in this episode either. So we saw the Duo X Machina moment coming from a, from a mile away, but we just didn't know who it would be. And they did give us a twist there, which I'm going to get to in a bit. And I remember prior to the episode airing, quite a lot of us were speculating maybe this episode would end on a very dark note. A la Empire Strikes Back, you know. And I feel like that would have been great. I feel like we needed that. Because prior to this point, I feel like, I, I, like I've said many, many times, there just weren't enough stakes. And I think that if they ended this like Empire where the bad guys kind of win, I would have been like, oh my god, season three is gonna be lit. Like very much similar to Empire, where yes, we get a little hope with Luke and Leia together looking out to the stars, but Han Solo was gone. I feel like that could have been Grogu, that could have been, I don't know, someone dying. Um, and obviously when you take into account like all the side shows and spin-off shows, it's the the list of people they could kill was slim. But that's what I mean. I feel like they could have taken more risks with this finale, with it being darker, uh, as opposed to having kind of a happy ending for everyone. And yes, there you know are questions that are raised, but I personally don't feel that there are strong questions. There, I don't think they're as strong as, oh no, what are they going to do? How are they going to come back from this? And I feel like that would have been stronger, in my personal opinion. Um, but right, let's get to that bit. Let's get to the good bit. Luke Skywalker. Now, again, if you saw me in the reaction video, you would know I lost my mind. Everyone lost their minds and it was amazing. And I have to give credit to Luke Skywalker having, you know, his hallway scene similar to his father before him. The parallels to Darth Vader scene in Rogue One was really well done. You know, in Rogue One, Darth Vader emerged from the shadows, from the darkness, and this time Luke emerged from the light. That was beautiful, and honestly, it did kind of bring in a, a tear to my eye, and I felt, I felt happy. You know, I felt like this is the Luke we deserved in The Last Jedi. This is the Luke we should have seen, we should have gotten. He was a hero, you know, he was a hero fueled by hope, and he was a legend, he was an icon. And you know, I have to give respect to John, to John Favreau for this, and Peyton Reed for making it, you know, look so good. Uh, when we saw the first X-wing, uh, I was already like, "Wait a minute, a, a single X-wing?" And then when there was no reply, when Bo-Katan asked who it was, I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" And then seeing it in the CCTV with the hood up, and then getting that shot of the green lightsaber, I think that was like some of the best. You know, reveal that was some of the best cinematography and best like revealing they could have done. Very, very well done. And I think Peyton Reed, you know, big, big credit to him. Uh, the CG for Luke was a little iffy. Um, I think it looks great from afar. Like when I first watched it, I was like, okay, I could allow it. But obviously, you know, the minute you kind of look a little closer, you pause, that's when you realize it's a little off. Like the mouth is a little stiff, the eyes looked a little, you know dead but we can allow that i think that's all right you know i think that was always going to be an issue but this leads me to my next topic which is probably going to be the most controversial of this episode um of, of this particular essay which is i think that they shouldn't have chosen luke um now before you guys all riot i think that luke is is again a little too safe um you know i feel like luke skywalker he is an icon but i feel like there was a missed opportunity of them putting in another character like ezra or you know cal kestis and obviously i can hear you arguing that oh we're gonna see them in another uh series like the ahsoka series etc cetera, etc cetera, which is of course true but i feel like luke seemed a little cheap to me it feels like lucasfilm knew that we would lose our minds and post our reactions and post our you know us losing our minds because it was luke and that's why they chose him i think from a narrative standpoint yes of course it makes sense but i feel like there's lots of other opportunities that they could have taken that 
would have gotten us equally as hyped. Like, I don't know. I just personally feel that I would have preferred if it was someone else. But my biggest argument against this is Mandalorian's main attraction, to me at least, was that it was separate from the Skywalker saga. And I feel like that should have been kept. That should have been maintained. Uh, because, you know, we've got... This, the movies are all the Skywalker saga. And, you know, they're legendary. Except the sequel trilogy. We don't talk about that. Um, and I feel like, you know, I liked The Mandalorian because it was a new set of characters. Or other sets of characters. And I liked it when it was, you know, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, Boba Fett. They're kind of like big characters, but not that big. If you get what I mean. Like, I personally wouldn't have wanted someone like Han or Lando or Leia or Luke or, I don't know, the Force Ghost of Obi-Wan or Yoda to come in because I feel like they're too big. Maybe, like, a teaser, maybe a smaller cameo, like a hologram or a voice would have sufficed for one of those big characters, in my opinion. So that's the main point I'm trying to make here, is that I feel like this episode, albeit good and albeit very solid, don't get me wrong, could have been even better. I feel like they could have gone down the route of, say, Game of Thrones. You know, early season Game of Thrones was amazing because they took risks. They had the balls to kill Ned Stark or main characters. And I remember the first time I watched Game of Thrones, because I hadn't read the books at, the, at that time, I lost my mind. I was like, oh my god. They killed Sean Bean. What? And, you know, like, I think that, obviously, like, this is a Disney show, and I doubt they would have, you know, killed the Mandalorian or Grogu, but I feel like having a little element of risk, having a little plot twist of a darker turn could have elevated this episode from being a solid, you know, six, seven. I'm going to say seven because, you know, Luke was amazing. I, I would say that having that, you know, a, a risky ending could have elevated it from a seven to a 10. And I think this season as a whole, some of the best TV I've seen this year. I think Ahsoka's episode for me is the best episode followed by Bill Burr's episode. I think those two are some of the best Star Wars stories we've ever seen. Um... And I would say that this finale, in my opinion, should have been better than those two. Uh, but I feel that because it was a little too safe, it was only an okay ending for me. I feel like it's a 7 out of 10, whereas it could have been 10. Um, and I think, you know, the season as a whole has been great. Um, but I feel like, you know, now it also begs the question of, you know, where are they going to go forward with this? And of course, I have all the faith in Favreau and Filoni and all the showrunners that they're going to smash out season three. But, um, you know, does this mean that we're going to see less of Grogu? Are we going to get a time jump? And I don't think there's that big of a setup for the main conflict of season three. Like Moff Gideon is now, you know, in the custody of the good guys. Grogu is now with Luke. It's kind of too happy an ending, um, in my opinion. Uh, there's a few small points that I've also written down here, like um, I think the Darksaber conflict, like the ownership of the Darksaber was a little iffy as well. But of course, I understand that it is the lore, it is the Mandalorian way, so fair enough. But it also does feel a little, oh, come on, man, like at that moment and that time, it felt a little iffy for me personally, but that's just a very small nitpick, um, especially since in Rebels, we saw Sabine hand the sword over to Bo. So why is that such a big issue now? But I have done a little research and, you know, people are saying that's why uh, not all the Mandalorians followed Bo um, completely because she didn't win it in combat. But I feel like... Um, you know, it was just a little kind of like mistimed for me personally. It just felt very like, oh, there's lots going on. And then there's like a now like a new side thing that they're introducing, you know, at the last second. But I have to give also credit to um, Moff Gideon. Like, I think he, uh, his characterization of like, you know, turning the good guys against one another was pretty well done. So big up to that. But yeah, that's, that's a very small, small nitpick because I know it's lore. I know it's, you know, in universe. 
Another point worth mentioning is back to the CG or the deepfake technology that they used for Luke is why do we need to resort to doing that or de-aging someone or using a deepfake as opposed to exploring a new character or exploring another character that has already been established and giving them you know more you know story more development now of course they can avoid using cg altogether if they get sebastian stan i think that would be a hugely wasted opportunity um if they don't utilize sebastian stan's likeness to mark hamill so i'm very intrigued to see you know how they go forward in season three like will we spend more time with luke and if so will this just become the new sequels like are we trying you know so hard to forget the sequels which in my opinion is fine you know what scrap the sequels i'm happy with that but on a realistic note can disney even afford to retcon the sequels and if we're not thinking that big and just focusing on luca now before the sequels then obviously it begs the question of we know how that story ends and there will be that bitter, you know, that sour taste in your mouth where like, oh, will Grogu end up being killed by Kylo Ren? Um, so there, you know, I understand that there is definitely scope to explore, but I just feel that it is also, you know, a wasted opportunity where we could have explored someone new and unique or a story that just hasn't been explored yet, which in my opinion was the beauty of and the whole selling point of the mandalorian and the clone wars was we're just getting stories that haven't been told but yeah uh you know this is pretty much my and marcus's thoughts on the season finale we think it was good and we think it was solid but we do think it's a little too safe but nonetheless it capped off one of the best seasons of star wars and tv this year and we are very excited for season three we're very excited to see the making of next week um and yeah let us know in the comments below what you thought of the season finale do you agree or disagree with my thoughts on it being a little too safe or am i just completely wrong which again fair enough <laughs> i am being a little nitpicky i know but um yeah again hope you guys enjoyed please consider subscribing if you like this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up leave a comment and uh, i've been seb peace